Welcome back everybody to the next installment of my In the Name of Jerusalem 2 for Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Today we are diving back in and I want to apologize the last episode if you're watching this through the playlist was a bit of a mess. I have absolutely no idea what happened. The render was fine when I uploaded it to YouTube. It was only 14 minutes long but the video file said it was 40 minutes long. Somewhere in between there it got cut off so I apologize to those of you who are following the series uh, and hopefully I can make this episode just that little bit longer for you so you don't have to worry and you haven't really missed out on too much but basically all you did miss out on was us conquering down here in the south we did reclaim all of these uh, little provinces down in the south of Greece however unfortunately we have received another rebellion story of our lives and that of course is something we are going to have to rectify we need to reclaim all of these islands and I mean honestly the Belisarius should just go ahead and give us these settlements we also did lose Crete which is kind kind of a, a big loss because it's a very prosperous town to the Byzantine Empire. However, luckily there's no castles on this. It is just one city. So I think if we come down here, we'll take an army, we'll conquer both of these and we should be sitting pretty pretty. We also, this episode, re I really want to deal with the rebellion here in Macedon. I think reclaiming Thessalonica will be a big gem and again, a settlement that I would personally love to reclaim if we could. Uh, there's only, what, two settlements? So I think if basically this episode, the plan is conquer these two, conquer this, conquer this, uh, and then maybe look to take on the Serbians if we're still at war with them, maybe look to send an army off here in the west. And then I think from then on, oh, I really want to go west. I really, uh, sorry, east, oh, god damn. Uh, it's, it's early in the morning, okay. I really want to go east and actually kind of engage some of the more different units and armies. Like, I would love to go back to war with the Sultan of Rum, start actually fighting in the mountains of Turkey would be awesome, as well as maybe go down here and reclaim Cyprus as it has been lost to us it is you know reclaimed by the kingdom of cyprus and yeah that's a faction i would love to see uh, you know stuck under heel first things first though let's make sure that our army is up to scratch so we do need to recruit some more men we can have 123 soldiers right now we only have 99 in our army so let's pick up some extra cavalry i'm actually going to pick up some of the lighter infantry as well i think it's going to be absolutely fine to grab them and of course this is going to be hurting our prosperity but nothing too bad oh yeah i also want to make sure as well that we are taking our sister with us uh because my wife's now be here uh yeah look at her she's already there sitting on her throne she knows her place uh to govern my kingdom whilst i'm at war i love that uh but yeah we want to make sure that we take our sister back into our party because she is our archer queen she deals with the archers uh pushing off oh we're also very low on food as well so let's make sure we maybe hit one of our settlements before uh before we head off so yeah i think our immediate goal is probably to move off into thessalonica and start you know this is en route and we'll deal with that love to see it as well 160 uh bits it's a grain right there that's going to feed our army for several days now. Uh, we also probably actually do, oh, do we just go back? Do we just go back to Constantinople really quickly? Have a little supply run. Something else I'll mention on top of that as well is if you are enjoying this series or maybe you've just clicked on this video and you haven't seen the previous ones, I'll leave a link to the playlist down below in the description so you can go ahead and check out every single episode really, really easily uh, just by just following that. Also, a lot of people have been finding the unlisted episodes that haven't been released yet and dropping comments. And if you do watch them, please do drop a like and a comment because it does translate when the video does actually go live you guys are just a little bit sneaky but i appreciate the support anyway okay so before we do go into enemy territory i am going to camp really quickly get our party fatigue let a few of the armies that we have coming to us actually arrive on time we're still waiting for one more force and i think the plan here is to probably go and actually try and like starve out the city of thessalonica because i imagine it has a very very strong garrison i, I don't want to get too close i don't want to alert them that we're here because there is an enemy army right there but we could try and engage it. Yeah, oh my lord. There is an 829-man garrison at Thessalonica. That's pretty scary. So I think first things first, what we need to do is probably try and beat this army piecemeal. And then we're going to raid every single town that they have. That should stop their supplies. That should stop their ability to recruit soldiers uh, and really come into our favor. Now, the question is, do we engage this army now? Because it is exhausted. It's not going to be able to get away from us. Well, it's energetic now. It's just got some um, some energy back. But they're going to be sleeping for another five hours. But our army isn't that much bigger than theirs. They've got some wounded. 
not much cavalry. We have, yeah, I mean, a considerable amount more cavalry. So I think that's more than enough for us just to go in here and engage them. There's another army over there that might be able to get dragged in, but let's just do it. Let's if engage this force um, and we'll put I these traitors to the sword. Actually, a really good battlefield for us as well. We have some nice cliffs to our right-hand side. Our infantry can kind of dominate the center. If the AI goes and falls back into that forest, which most likely they're going to do, we can take this hill to our right. Yeah, I'm liking this a lot. So what we'll do is we'll kind of split our infantry up. I'm actually going to leave busy these guys just to infantry. It's going to be the best way for us to get in. Six all our archers into one division. Now, do keep in mind, I do want to make a, a really, really cool kind of like horse archer line. Also, for some reason, we don't have any horse archers. Is that? Yeah, that's not the case right there. You can see them uh, all just kind of for some reason being in this division right there. Uh, okay, well, let's... Uh, we haven't got anything locked. I don't know why it's done that. Has it done that because of the javelins, maybe? No, the javelins are fine. Um, what if we do like this? Does it sort it out? No, that's weird. Okay, I'm going to spend a second to try and fix this. Think I've sorted it out now. Should it be good? I just have to go and mess around with some of these stats. So the AI... I'm going to probably take back this hill to our right. So let's make sure we match them. I'll send one of my lines here and here. We'll send the cavalry up to kind of protect that. We'll send our smaller group of cavalry around the flank. And our archers uh, will push up as well. By the looks of it, we're going to probably be fighting across this gorge right there. Which is going to make for a beautiful looking battlefield. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful that we'll be able to dominate this one. We do have 123 infantry. But we by far have the cavalry advantage. Oh god, they're charging me right off the bat. Okay, cavalry charge. They're charging me on this side as well no they're not okay uh then this cavalry hold i'm gonna go and probably support them down here on the flank a little bit oh man i hate this i hate how the ai does such stupid things with the cavalry when you tell them to uh to charge they were just charging in the headlong into the enemy formation which is just bizarre like it's crazy i don't see why i can't tell my cavalry to protect the flanks uh, like the AI does if I give them over to the AI. It's really stupid. Um, and I, again, I just want these guys just to focus down this formation, but it seems like it's near impossible to do that, even with RTS camera. Now, maybe uh, now maybe the new addition in 1.2 uh, sorts that out a little bit, but I, I don't think it does really uh, too well. You just have to really like, unnecessarily micro these to, to a, a pretty stupid extent, I think. Uh, but you just don't need to. Like It's so unnecessary, I feel. But so is the you know, nature of the beast, I guess, uh, that, you know, it is what it is. Okay, let's set up our main line on top of this hill. I want to get my archers up here as well in these formations so they can start firing down. Uh, that's going to be a really nice little position right here. Our main infantry line can kind of be a little bit higher up uh, in shield wall, of course. And our secondary line can kind of just be positioned maybe in the gorge. I'm a little bit scared of the enemy cavalry charges, so I'll set that line up like so. And then we have our main cavalry block here uh, which is just going to be playing right defensive there and our cavalry here who is still being harassed here not really much i can do about it again if i was to give them over to the ai they immediately would go like defend left flank and then they would just stay very passive they'd warn off any cavalry that comes and charges them and then they would uh, then they would just play defensive they wouldn't overextend into enemy formations which is exactly what i want it's just i as the player can't physically decide that which is really stupid and oh look at that we just got two kills for one now that's what i'm talking about baby Okay, let's push our archers a bit further down the hill. We're, we're currently engaging with enemy formations here. They seemingly somehow have been able to get into our formation. I don't really know how. How are we looking at the missile off? Do we just push on them? I feel like we do. Because our cavalry are going to be dominating this fight already. So let's start engaging them a little bit more aggressively. Uh, I guess we will focus heavily down here as well. The archers can come further down the hill as well. Just so they have a better a kind of scope on the enemy line. Because, yeah, our cavalry is already hitting them. I don't know how effective that's going to be. But we'll utilize the chaos. Yeah, we'll definitely utilize the chaos to get up in their faces. Uh, we'll, we'll take our infantry out of them shield walls. So they can actually get into the into position a little bit quicker. Whilst the cavalry, cavalry is harassing them. We'll be able to get our javelins in on them. Uh, I'm just a little bit scared of all this cavalry about to come flying into my flank. But let's maybe try and deal with them again. This is all friendly. That is not friendly. Neither is that. 99 damage. Come on. That was a kill and a half. Our archers are hitting them hard, though. And as their cavalry comes flying in, we can harass them pretty nicely. Well, that's my horse down. Hopefully, I can get on another one really quickly. Let's go. Let's go. Shield up. Shield up. And now they're coming closer towards me, which is good. We've already got this gnarly outflank. Now, the question is, do we send this outflank? You guys form sure all again. Do we send this outflank into their, their formation? Or do we send it into their archers? They're actually only down to 14 archers. And another beautiful cavalry charge. Devastating that. Okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's send this right into their backs of their infantry. 
I mean, I, I don't even know if they're going to be standing still by the time we get there. The infantry should be coming, flying down now. And yeah, just go charging into that. The cavalry itself is in here. Just doing so much damage. Yeah, javelins as well. There's their leader. I can see him. Their leader is right there. Let's try and take him alive, please. He's going to try and escape. I'm not going to let him escape. He might get out of here, though. The archers are trying to pit him down. This enemy cavalry. Like God damn, why is he American? Why is he American? Hey, we got five damage in on him. Can we get his horse, maybe? I want to dismount him as well if we can. Okay, his horse is going to live, but he might be able to... He might hit one of these trees, and then we can fully collide in on him. There we go. Taking him down. Wounded. So hopefully, because I got the kill, that is going to be enough. But that... Sh is there another lord somewhere? I can hear him shouting. Wait, he I killed him. I slew him. And yet he's still chatting. He's still chatting at me. We can't be having any of that, can we? Nice, there we have it. A clean little victory. We only lost 29 men there. I'm happy with that, considering we're really trying to minimize casualties uh, in this. Uh, it's really important that we do. And nice, we caught at least one of them prisoner. I'm not sure. Yeah, we caught them both prisoner, which is great. They're not going to be happy with us one bit, but I mean, I don't... Are we caught... And we actually saved one of our friends as well. Nice. Oh, Lord, that's what we like to see. Look at all these units. I love to see it because every unit we get here is one less we have to recruit from home. And there's some good cavalry here. Tier 4 cavalry will take that. I mean, I guess what we'll do is set everything by tier and that way we can, uh, you know, kind of more effectively choose our elites. I think there's some Norman cavalry here captured. Uh, and as I said, this is all units that we don't have to actually personally recruit, which I'm all for. Cavalry, our, our, our cavalry force is looking very, very uh, strong. And then everything else is pretty basic. I actually really like the Peltis. I think they do some good damage. So we're going to grab them. And that's going to be our limit, unfortunately. Also, a bunch of upgrades as well. Not that they do tons. It's still nice to have them. Uh, and oh, a crossbow. So the interesting thing is that you could normally not really get crossbows in this mob. Because uh, only the Normans really have access to them. And you can't recruit units of a different culture. So the fact we've been able to pick that up is actually... Uh, yeah, pretty pretty nice. There's also, what is this, like a Warhammer? Yeah, it actually does more blunt damage. So we'll grab up that Warhammer. Again, not the best in the world. There's actually a really good bow here that Milady might be able to use. Or even Imad. Uh, yeah, it's much better for him. So we'll go and throw that over to him, uh, which is good. And that's all the good loot, right? Yeah, we'll take the food. Of course, the pottery, the, the stuff, and the horses. Um, actually, we, we, need, we need to take everything. The reason we need to take everything is because we're actually starting to bleed money as we expand our army. So now that we've defeated that army, I think I want to go down south now and start hitting their villages. If we hit their villages, they physically can't recruit soldiers. Their cities will start to run out of food because there's no peasants delivering that food to the cities. And that will help to really weaken the garrison at Thessalonica. The thing is as well, is something you actually have to remember is that these villages, granted this battle is very easy. Sometimes the villages can actually be really difficult to take because they have the lance recruitment of the settlement so again they'll have a lot of these soldiers that you'll then go to recruit like you've seen like i recruit the men from the city itself uh that actually does add up and that actually does cause some pretty gnarly issues uh to your actual army because they're gonna have you know the, the top tier units which is you know pretty scary awesome as well our stewardship just hit 100 which is actually really big because that now allows us to discard armors um to go ahead and gain troop experience which is again it's probably one of the best if not the best perks in the game granted you're giving up money which is always really nice however i personally feel like it's not that big of a deal and i'd rather have a more elite army than lots of money if i can afford my army that's all good also we are being raided to hell up here i wonder if it's for serbians or the normans the normans are also pushing us here which is a little bit scary because this is an important settlement and if we were to give up this settlement it would actually dramatically reduce our capabilities of doing operations down here in the south however that is not my problem i am dealing with the Thessalonicans right now. We need to deal with this rebellion because it's in the heart of the empire and that's something that we cannot let slide. Okay, we have another city village, or I guess village burnt to the crisp. There is also their main army just off the coastline as well. But the nice thing is that their settlements are burning. We can also maybe retreat back and get some extra grain if we need to. Now, the question is, I mean, wow, this is like literally the grain fields of the Byzantine Empire right here. Look at all these settlements here in the fertile lands of Thessalonica. Okay, so here is the plan from now on. I was originally going to just try and starve out Thessalonica, but that garrison is insane. And I think what we're going to need to do is try 
Barbarian probably take away their, their food supply here. With only that settlement, they shouldn't be able to sustain a garrison as large as that. And this one is a little bit more manageable. We're going to set it onto Besiege. Again, they have more men than us. But again, we, I think they only have five, yeah, they only have five days worth of food. That militia is going to you know starve out. I and mean, then it's just going to be the garrison for us to deal with. And that is much more manageable. Uh, I'm going to probably, I mean, we have to take care of the catapults for sure. I'm also going to build up probably a battering ram, some siege towers. And we're just going to go for it. I think this is going to be the best plan of action. Uh, um, because again, a lot of these food villages are all tied to Thessalonica. It does also seem as well that we've got some armies on their way to support us. And with these armies, uh, we'll be able to take this no problem. Okay, let's do this. Let's clear this out. Now, they do actually still have their artillery pieces left alive. And uh, I guess that's going to hurt us. But I wanted a quick siege here, actually. I didn't want to go and give them any chance to uh, maybe muster enough men. You can see the bands of power-wise uh, were looking very good. Wait, did I not deploy the artillery? Okay, I'm an idiot. I didn't, don't think I did it. Did I not? Oh, yeah, I must not have deployed... Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even deploy our siege tower on this side. Okay, let's just get the ladders up quickly, get on the walls and start dealing with their infantry. At least the nice thing about getting the ladders up on this side is means their artillery can't hit me. Oh yeah, and this is the map as well where we can get access to that artillery piece and shoot it down on the walls. I love that. So we're going to blitz that right hand side, get on the artillery and just start clearing this wall out from defenders before they can even get up here fully. I love it. So I guess I will help out here a little bit because I do want to make this as easy as possible and we should be yeah more than a match there boom okay you guys it's up to you to defend this place and i'm gonna get on that artillery piece immediately and just start wiping out the walls we do actually have to clear it out first though and they're not gonna give this up easily but luckily our one-handed skill has kind of got up there now so we are a little bit more formidable when it comes to uh the pieces of course so they are not gonna be giving this up lightly so it's try our best. Um, yeah, you may have noticed we actually ended up crashing, so now we are here, and for some reason, the siege tower spawned this time, so we're gonna take those, and we're gonna lead the assault, you know? It's better better this way than the other way, I think, even though the other way would have been greater. We're gonna have a little bit of a harder time getting up here, but our javelins can also do their, their work, and now we just need to climb a siege tower into the enemy lines that are already formed up. It's gonna be way harder. Also, we need to actually shut down the artillery piece, because if that carries on shooting us, we're gonna be in a very bad spot here because oh, it's gonna be hard to break through. I mean, let's open the gate, let's let them come. And um, we're gonna have to fight our way through here. It's gonna be way more brutal, but probably cooler to watch, I would say. Let's try and just cut our way through here. There's not as many of them this time as well. And our MG are doing a good job right off the bat. We've already, already made it off the ramp. So let's try and get our blade through as best as we can. Try and make sure I'm up here. My armor can tank quite nicely. Yes, yeah, another one down. Perfect. Let's keep on pushing. I basically need to push my way out on towards this right-hand side. Also, make sure we shield bash as well, just so that kind of opens up a little bit more space. And here we go. Exactly what we want to do. Let's keep our shield up again. We don't want them to, like, chase me down. We need to kind of clear a path on this right-hand side more than anything. And when they strike, that's when we strike. There's a few of them down. Oh, what? Oh, my God. Yeah, okay. I just got killed by an artillery piece. Wow, that is brutal. Yeah, player control agent is dead. I think you are correct in that statement. Wow, we just got absolutely murdered. Okay, I've tried to fight this battle like six times now. It keeps on crashing us. So we are just going to auto-resolve it. Hopefully actually winning the day as well because it would really suck if we end up losing that. It's annoying to actually have to do that because it was going to be a really cool battle. Uh, but sometimes the games just don't want you to play the battles. And again, that's one of the reasons why this hasn't been released to the public yet is because it's just not done yet. You know, there are stuff like these crashes that need to be fixed. And uh, yeah, you can do, obviously see, you know, I, I, a lot of the time I don't show the bugs that do arise because I just cut them out. But of course the bugs are there and you know, they, con they are constantly adding stuff to the mod. And that's again another reason why it's not released because as they add more stuff to the mod, uh, more stuff breaks and we have to kind of go back and fix it retroactively. However, that is one of the castles taken and now really they just wow Thessalonica has one two three four five villages wow that's a city that I really really want to take yep another city where we're not even asked to be uh be the lord thereof wow we're not even considered oh, I'm starting to get a little bit annoyed by this by our by, by our emperor I might have to go ahead and yeah start start thinking about doing certain things and there's also a big old group of looters here we can just clear out for free yeah, these guys are going to get run down and I imagine give us some decent experience. Another really good reason as well to do this is because it gives us influence, but also gives us tactic experience. And that's something we are trying to work towards uh, pretty heavily. Oh, boom as well. Look at that. We are now clan rank two after them two. Oh, pretty juicy victories. So the question is, do we 
now after conquering that, I don't suspect they're going to be able to take it back. Do we head home really quickly, recruit up our armada of soldiers, and then come back for Thessalonica? Or do we just kind of accept that this is our army? We set siege to Thessalonica in the hopes that reinforcements arrive. Um, because there's, what, a 400-man army there. We starve them out a bit. I don't know how much food they have left over here. But we starve them out. How many men do they have? They have 1,000 because of the, uh, the reinforcements. God, we, I mean, this is, that's a lot of men. That's a lot of men. Oh, wow. Well, the most important event in history has just arised. Look at that. Your beard has grown to maximum length. What? Is that a custom mechanic for this game? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Is that a custom mechanic that my beard grows in this game? Or is that a Battle Lord feature? That's like something I've literally never noticed. Uh, wow, okay, cool. Do I need to go to like the hairdressers? Is this like simulating my everyday life? I mean, that is Battle Lord modding at peak perfection, if I do say so myself. It was a long march. We finally made it home. So let's make sure we recruit up our army. Oh, are these new? I feel like these guys look a bit different. Uh, but maybe not, maybe not. So let's recruit everyone, all the elite soldiers. Uh, I guess we'll get the cavalry. And let's recruit maybe one stack of hoplites. Nothing too special. We're going to go, probably going to leave our, our main settlement alone because we were there. We've recruited there quite often. And that's going to really hurt the hearth. So we're just going to come back over here, recruit kind of the elite soldiers. And then I guess maybe a block of archers as well. Uh, maybe some skirmishers. Sure. Let's do that. So then our army is back up to full strength. We could even head off to Constantinople um, to recruit. Yeah, the men do need to rest. So we'll rest out here. But let's maybe head to Constantinople, recruit some mercenaries, uh, and then we'll head back out to Thessalonica and that is where we are gonna we're gonna take the settlement for sure. We're here as well. It actually does make pretty good sound to actually buy ourselves a a workshop now. I think we have enough um right to buy a workshop yeah 40k boom okay nice we can mess around that quite nice here unfortunately this mod isn't on 1.2 quite yet so we don't have access to all the new cool workshop features however that's gonna help hopefully give us some extra money now it's a linen workshop right that consumes uh silk and then turns it into linen to sell, I believe. Oh, no, wait. It's flax into linen. Yeah, boom, right there. Again, it's a shame that we can't mess around a bit more. The, one, the changes in 1.2 are great for industry. If you haven't seen that, just check out my videos on 1.2. You can, like, add in input. You can sell the goods and stuff. It's, yeah, it's a really, really cool feature. Unfortunately, not something we can really mess around with in this 1.1.5 uh, patch version. But again, that's all going to be implemented later on in the mod. And I'm sure they're going to even add in their own spin on things, uh, which is really exciting, you know. Uh, the fact that Tail Worlds are adding in a lot of cool features, Modders is going to take them and set them even further. Uh, we're just kind of all waiting for the, the 1.2 to come out of beta patch, which honestly shouldn't be that long now, considering that it's been in, it's been in beta for uh, close to a month now. Oh, why are we having more rebellions? More rebellions. Where this time? Where this time? Uh, not around Thessalonica. If it's off to the east, I don't mind. The west, I'm trying to get fully under our control. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Is it down here in the south? Yes, yeah, down. No, this is Cyprus who have conquered all of that. Good on Cyprus, to be honest. Um, I, I can't see it. It's not the sin up, is it? No, it's not over there either. Oh, it's right here. Okay, so it's where... Um, yeah, it's down here in the south. I can't remember. What faction is there in Rome Rome 2, Total War? Really trying to think now. Oh my god, I've, I've literally drawn such a mind blank. What faction is there in Rome 2, Total War? It's like a Greek... A Greek Eastern hybrid faction. Uh, it's really powerful. They have a wonder right by them. Oh, there's such a famous per 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 Pergamon. Pergamon. Yes, I got it. Thank God. I knew you guys were probably shouting at me in the chat. Pergamon. Yes, that that was eluding me. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Nice. I'm happy with that. That's a solid uh, little answer. Okay, let's do this. Let's set the city under siege. We're gonna have to try and build up. We're gonna, of course, have to clear out all their defenses. I am hoping as well. We have reinforcements. Should be. We have another 195 men. So we don't outnumber us massively. I am hoping though another roaming army is gonna support us here. We're of course gonna have to clear the walls. There's no way they can uh, have them walls under their control. Uh, but, with artillery because that will just slaughter us we need every man to count we're going to need trebuchets we're going to need or maybe catapults can do because that can help clear the walls a little bit we're going to definitely need battering rams going through that gate and we're going to definitely need siege towers i is of the essence so we are running out of influence luckily we are gaining some so i think i probably have one more tick of influence before we have to move in on this as well as that they also have more food for me as well so this city is set up for a siege and we're set up for a pretty reckless assault on the city luckily their morale for whatever reason is really low uh yeah i don't really know why but i don't think that also matters because i don't think they can break which is 
uh, yeah, a nice little boom. So let's add all our trebuchets here and then immediately get to building on our artillery. I think we'll be able to build both of these just before we break. Yeah, look at that. Literally, the only thing keeping us alive is because everybody is eating our food. Wow, that literally came in clutch. If everybody wasn't eating our food, we'd be in a lot of trouble here. Uh, yeah, that's, that's big. That's big. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to have to go in here. We don't have enough men. Uh, we have... I mean, do I risk it? Do I risk going for this? I guess we do. I'd rather have two siege towers than just one. So I don't actually think we have time uh, to build this second siege tower because armies do start to leave pretty quickly uh, when you get too low. I mean, we could risk it uh, and just reload if we do. I know there's no way. There's no way, right? We have to destroy that, which is fine. There's no way this builds before someone leaves my army. And we need every man, woman, and child. I'm also going to recruit every prisoner as well. Because how much does that even affect us? Minus 38. But does that actually... Okay, it boosts us down to 16 morale. Does that matter? It gives us more men. I mean, I think that's fine. Is it fine? I guess we'll find out. It gives us like a lot more men. Puts up to 700. Which is a lot. We are battering around to go through the gate. Remember, though, as well, we are also playing the battle size uh, 2,000. So they have this many men and we have this many men. Like, that's actually how many soldiers both sides have. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just go in. If worse comes to worse, no, my men out. We just reload and you guys never, ever would have seen this footage. Okay, so I think we're going to actually have to do some tactics. I know crazy battles and tactics. But yeah, I definitely think we're going to need to close the distance as quickly as possible with our main infantry line. And then I, I, I kind of just want to kind of go through one of the attack points, whether it is through the gate or one of the ladders. I think that's going to be our best plan of action. Try and clear that out. And I'm kind of leaning towards just pushing the, uh, the gate, kind of getting our uh, main line up here. And then, yeah, we've got a lot of infantry. I thought like we could just bust through. I mean, there's a lot of men here as well. There's a lot of soldiers here. Wow. But yeah, I think maybe doing that and then just busting through the gate with everything we have is going to be way more beneficial than trying to assault the flanks, get the ladders up, wait for the, the siege tower. Yeah, we have a siege tower on that flank. But then again, maybe going up the siege tower is not going to be a bad idea. No, we're going to go through the gate. Let's go through the gate and let's hope for the best. Soldier! We'll get our soldiers up, then I'll form shield wall. And yeah, we're just going to blitz. We're going to blitz and it's going to be the best day of our lives. I might also try and get myself up here as well. With just pure infantry, try and clear out some of the lines. Okay, we've made our way up so far. We've lost roughly around about similar amounts of men, which I'm happy with. Hopefully, they'll make room for the battering ram, which we can even get on ourselves and help to push on forward. Uh, and yeah, as I said, the main goal here is just to, to well and truly just break down this gate. We bulldoze of everything we can and just try and push forward. I think this would be a much better strategy than trying to go up the ladders where we're just sitting ducks for arrow fire and infantry. And same with the siege tower. The siege tower offers us a little bit more pushing power uh, but even then, I think we'd struggle. Whereas this way, we could just wait of numbers through the gate. Luckily, I mean, hopefully, I should say, they're not all going to be there waiting for us. Because if they are, then we're here. It's a completely different story. And we might have to kind of pull back. But I think this combined assault is going to be way better. It's a shame we can't make breaches. Because breaches would be the dream right now. Okay, now let's give the order to break forward of everything you guys have. You should all be pushing here. I'm going to get you guys out of, lose, out of shield wall now as well. You should be able just to push forward uh, and start attacking this. We will help out ourselves. I mean, hopefully nobody throws a rock down on us. But yeah, we'll try and cut down this gate as quickly as possible. One thing is I would love to see uh, with the inevitable building rework is ways to actually upgrade your settlement and have that visually uh, change whilst you do look at that. But I tell everybody to charge if they just come through here. Because it'd be so cool to be able to, like, make modifications to your fortress. I, I really think that would be so much fun to be able to do something like that. Um, okay, we'll push up here now. Start slashing. Wait for more of the men to actually get stuck in. Because the path finding isn't going well. And then we'll aggressively push them. Yeah, this is going to be an absolute cluster uh, as we fight here. Wow. I mean, I don't really know what I was expecting to be So far, the push is going pretty well. You can see we've made our way into the settlement and we are breaking forward with more men. It's exactly what I wanted to utilize. I mean, we're taking heavy casualties doing this. I think once we're in the settlement, we'll be able to obviously nullify their advantage and really push in. And we're ourselves getting a lot of kills. I am obviously quite close to the front. Yeah, that's a lot of men. But I think we're also like completely reducing their firepower of their archers to nothing and that's that's pretty good yeah and the more men we get in the more we can strike push man push let's go 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 weight of numbers baby into the breach 
This is awesome. I love it. It looks so good as well. It really does. I might try and push out to the flank. We are fighting pretty effectively so far. Just pushing here, stabbing and slashing ab above heads are really the best way to go. Yeah, I mean, we're breaching. We're breaching. We're, we're taking casualties, as I said, but as soon as we just break through one side, the enemy archers are going to just fall immediately. And if we can get on some of these more elite soldiers as well, get them out, the lighter militia will just crumble. Oh, we just took 58 points of damage there. Okay, I might try to fall back a little bit. We are also running very thin, though. Very thin on them. I think we just need to push forward this a little bit more, and then the enemy formation will be ripped in two. I need to make sure I don't die as well. I want to stay alive for this. Come on. There's only like two lines stopping us. And then we're home free. Keep on going. Push, man. For the Emperor. Push. Still fighting on the streets. And there you go. Look at that green. We're through. We're through. Keep on pushing. They're blocking with daggers here. Shield bash them down. Slice him in half. Nice. There we go. Okay. I think the settlement will fall now. I mean... Again, numbers-wise, we're losing, but we're really starting to take a kill advantage. We're pushing on both sides of the street now. Let's make sure we try and take care of this guy. Because that's drawing up a lot of our soldiers there at the ladder. How are we looking on this bang? Their reinforcements are coming to the gate, but it is too late. Everybody just charge now. I want every man, woman, and child who can wield a weapon to get over here. And we just need to collapse their formations. That was awesome, man. I love that. And that's one of the great things about these larger scale battles, honestly, is that effect where you are just fighting with so many elite soldiers. Like, we had, we had like, what, 1,600 men on the battlefield right there? And it means these battles actually feel like a big back and forth. Like, at first they pushed us, and then we pushed them. With RBM, of course, that helps massively as well, adding so much more flavor to the, uh, to the battles themselves. You know, really, really awesome stuff. With all the armor as well, because obviously I'm only using RBM AI. I'm not using the RBM armor mod, which changes the way of combat. So this is like, the AI is a lot more passive in this, trying to keep themselves alive. But when, when it comes to the armor and the damage, that's all uh, in the name of Jerusalem, which is obviously really, really fun and cool to mess around with. Let's just try and take out their archers now. The settlement is down. And now we just clear these stragglers who are still remaining. Try and minimize our casualties yet. Yeah, stop anyone who's trying to flee now. Get up here on the arch. I mean, I'm mainly moving up to the archers, I think. They're the guys who are going to be doing damage to me. But we just have pure weight of numbers here. There's no way they can stop this bleeding. Except for a blade to the head. Okay, cool. I'm going to pull back though and just help out. I'm very wounded and I wouldn't like to die here. If I could help it. I wish there was, like, a really cool system in Battle Lord where you'd actually, like, if you did go down, there was, like, a chance you'd receive a, an injury and that injury would, like, actually affect your character. Maybe not all the way and maybe only in the hardest difficulty, but I think that could be, like, a really nice addition to the game. And, man, just look at that destruction. That is a battle right there. That is a battle right there. Let's smash this guy down. Let's kick him. There you go. I didn't even die. Wow, what a chad. Uh, but yeah, look at this. This is a siege and a half. You can tell there has been a brutal battle fought over this gatehouse. Man, that is truly epic and what Battle Lord is all about right there. All that was just looking down on the bodies. It's truly harrowing. The cheer, you know, these guys deserved it. They were traitors. They were traitors to the throne. And even with their 800 men, we were able to win. And what a victory. So much renown and influence will we'll take back to the bank for sure. And hopefully we get given this settlement. That's all I want is this one settlement to go ahead and bring into the battle. The nice thing is as well, we'll upgrade all these soldiers. And then we'll also get more upgrades. But mainly as well, I'm going to be giving a lot of these soldiers off to the, uh, to the, the dungeons. Which is again really help us out. Oh, there's some cool body armor there. I guess it's just like a green variant of what we already have. A marksman flag. Okay, well, we already have an marksman flag. Does she already have it? Okay, well, a better one. So we'll definitely give her that one. That's a nice upgraded version to help buff up our soldiers. Uh, a bit of a better bow. It's not as accurate. 
But it's also a little bit faster and a little bit more damage. Yeah, I'd rather she just gets kills rather than anything else. She's like suited up as well, by the way. She has some amazing armor. Uh, I guess we're currently looking for uh, some more of our soldiers. I guess we can upgrade them like that. Really don't like his trousers. Do we have any better ones? Yeah, it's a bit better. This guy is super skinny, though. He needs to go on like a bit of a bulk, I think. Uh, because, yeah, look at him. He needs to, yeah, to buff up a little bit if he's going to be leading my men into a battle. He just needs what, a key, key, uh, cape and some gloves, which is fine. Yeah, that's good. Do we have any other armor to give away? No. Ah, uh, yeah, we're good. We only have them companions, which is good. So what we'll do is we will now just take the food and water. Uh, yeah, we don't have any. So we'll just take the 8,000 troop experience. That'll help level us up a little bit. We'll, of course, show mercy to the settlement. And then can we give off some people? We can't donate anyone else to the dungeon. So I guess we will just sell them off. Making sure as well just to sell off the soldiers specifically I want to get rid of. Uh, we do have a little bit of a fine limit, but I want to be able to recruit these soldiers because they do actually add a, a decent amount to my army and saves me. You know, I can basically just go ahead and utilize these guys whilst on campaign. So we'll make sure we keep all the best soldiers and then probably just get rid of a few of the archers as they're the, probably the least valuable in the open field battle. Oh, there's some Italian crossbowmen here. Don't mind if I do right off the bat. And now the army should be looking very potent. Yes, we are lacking a lot of soldiers. And yes, I can just go boom, 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 boom. And I probably should have done that before getting rid of all my prisoners, to be fair. But hell yeah, Thessalonica is now ours. That was the main goal of the episode, was to take Thessalonica away from the rebels. And not only did we do that, we also took this castle that's now been taken back. But hopefully not for much longer, because they're already sieging it. Uh, wow, when did that get taken? Don't even remember that happening. Either way, though, uh, that's now going to be reclaimed. And then we're going to have this entire area. Good, our allies down in the south took that. Uh, we haven't taken back Crete yet, which is our main problem. And obviously, there's roads as well, which is a settlement we do need to reclaim. But I think we're finally starting to stabilize. We peaced out with the Normans. I don't think we really lost much against them, which is good. We're still at war with the Serbians, which is fine. We're peaced out with the Bulgarians. We're peaced out with the Solomon of Rum. And now our main allies, uh, by, and we also piece out of Cyprus as well. Okay, so who are we even fighting? Basically just fighting a bunch of rebellions. And I don't think many of these people actually have settlements. Yeah, you guys have no cities. You guys have no cities. You guys do still. You have no cities. You have a town still left remaining, which I think is the one we're about to take. No. Yeah, you guys still have a town somewhere. I mean, you guys do as well. I'm in Serbia. So we're basically finding a bunch of rebellions that will just be pieced out momentarily because they don't have any settlements left. I'm not going to waste my influence on doing that, but that's something they, they can do. Yeah, then it's really just Crete. I think Crete and then is the only real rebellion we have. I imagine these are probably a bunch of, uh, yeah, peace requests. And then the owner of Thessalonica, please give it to me. God damn it, why am I not here? I deserve this settlement. And yet they refuse to give it to me. We need to hold more feasts, I think. I think we need to hold more feasts, and that will encourage more people to vote for me. Yeah, looking at it as well, everybody has a settlement now. Some people have multiple settlements. Yeah, the clan that just got it has multiple settlements. So there's not a single clan in our empire that doesn't have one. Okay, we need to we need to befriend some people. So I think I'm gonna uh, disband the army now because it is in tatters. And I think we've done our fighting for this episode. We're gonna head home and then we're gonna hold a feast. Hopefully, more people turn up to this one, unlike last time. Oh yeah, I think that must have got cut off from the last episode. So yeah, basically at the end of the last episode, I got married. I, I, don't, I can't remember if that, that was shown or not because again, the, the episode got corrupted. But yeah, at the end of the last episode, I got married and I had a bunch of feasts and then. One more person rebels against me. I'm gonna alter four. But in fact, the happier matters. Uh, yeah, we held a feast and nobody showed up. I was extremely sad. It was like my seven-year-old birthday party. It was like a Travis. You know, and this is why the, the the Byzantines suck and the Crusaders and Saladin are so much better. Because, yeah, if you're the Crusaders, you're fighting an absolutely overwhelming force in their own territory. However, at least you have to deal with rebellions every time. Speaking of which, has Jerusalem been able to stand a little bit longer? Oh, yes, I mean, Jerusalem is still held by the Crusaders, but this is under siege, Jaffa's under siege, this is under siege, this has already been taken. Everything in this orange text has uh, been conquered by Saladin, which is basically the entirety. The Crusaders hold uh, this line of forts up here. They own Tyre and also a few settlements down here to the south. 
but not many whatsoever. Wow. The Crusaders have been ripped apart, but that's to be expected. You know, they haven't got the script quite in yet. That uh, means Richard turns up. Oh my God, this is, this is starting to get a little bit painful. I'm not going to lie. I actually literally might just start executing Lords because they need to learn, right? There needs to be some fear installed in these Lords to stop them from just rebelling. Oh, wow. News comes from France. On the second day of autumn, 1189, King Henry of England has died in Chiron after a double blow of illness and the betrayal of his children, Richard, his third son, finally becomes the new King of England. Uh, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the, the event is in the game where, where Richard comes over. I think it's only when they lose Jerusalem. But there we go. The king is dead. Long live the king. So let's go to uh, Constantinople really quickly. We need to make sure that we buy enough food for the feast itself. Uh, we're also losing men for some reason. Either way, though, we do need to make sure that we have enough food, that everybody has a great time, a little bit of everything. I think the more food and the more beers and different types of food they have, the more likely they are to actually gain relationships with us. And again, I'm hoping people are actually going to turn up as well, because last time nobody did, like I said. So it's just brutal. Oh, they took another settlement. Good. Keep on taking settlements, but give them to me. I mean, what more can a man do? I'm happy they're conquering these castles, but I'm also very upset that they're not going to me. Okay, all of this is surely enough to keep people happy at the feast. And has anybody turned up? I don't think so. I don't think a single important person has turned up besides my family once again. Yeah, we have what? one of my, uh, yeah, my brother right here. Uh, you know, he doesn't really... Uh, provide me with our wife all the way over here being guarded by her her white knights which i'm very happy with how's it going my lady it's been a while it has been a while hasn't it love uh and then yeah no one else is here oh there's my sister as well i think looking very bored on the throne i mean i can't blame you this good party this party isn't really uh, a very good party I, I do apologize oh this is my wife i missed you so much it seems we share the same wish my love let's be happy to get whoa what's happening the affection is strong. You are enjoying a happy time together. After a while, you hug and fall asleep. Oh, god damn. Uh, I mean, I guess we're trying to trying to conceive a, a baby, maybe? Um, you step very deeply. It feels like you haven't. The happy time ends. The sure happy time is over. You're apart soon and have other things to worry about. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Uh, hopefully, we conceived a baby. It did say after a while, though. And it should definitely have said after a short while because your boy ain't lasting. But I think with that and the fact that nobody's coming to my birthday party, aka the feast, we are going to go ahead and head and wrap up the episode. Um, and then, yeah, next episode, I think I'm going to completely ignore the West now. These rebellions are annoying, but I'm not going to go back and take more Byzantine castles. I think what we might do is we might... Oh my god, and this rebellion, I've conquered this so many times. I think we're going to basically just declare war on the Sultan of Rum and have some fun over in the East and just ignore the West, you know. It ain't our problem, okay? That's up for you guys to deal with. If you are enjoying this, please drop a like and a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.